Hello YouTubers and welcome to my review of the Doctor Who Maxibus Masterpiece Collection, 4th Doctor. Wow, that name is a bloody handful to say, but uh, yeah, this is something obviously you can no longer uh, get. It's been well out of production now for many years, but uh, I got one uh, thankfully for Christmas and here it is. So yeah, first thing I'll say about this is... If you're thinking that, the, you know, oh, I'll, I can't get this, so I'll get the Eagle Moss one. Now, this is much nicer than the Eagle Moss one, which is why I haven't got any of the Eagle Moss ones, because they have various inaccuracies and they look pretty old. But, yeah, um, so obviously, taking a look at this thing, if I can try and get everything in frame. So, it's basically uh, the same deal as uh, the others, so... It mainly cuts off, you know, just round uh, the course a bit here to the legs. But, uh, yeah, this is obviously based on the City of Death version of uh, the Fourth Doctor. So, you know, towards the end uh, of his tenure. But uh, this is a really nicely detailed statue. So, taking a look, you know, at the face, first of all, it's a really good likeness to Tom Baker. It honestly is... You can see his cheek and bone structure here, and also uh, it's what's really nice with the hair is it's obviously you know being done in a brown, but it's also been given a lighter sort of brown wash uh, to the curls and that, which is something uh, character options does sometimes and doesn't do on other times. It, they're a bit inconsistent with that, but uh, it looks really good on this statue here. So. Yeah, well done on that. That's really nice. Taking a look at the coat itself. So obviously, the thing that makes it unique to City of Death is the little, uh, coat uh, pin badge here with the the little pink scripts and that on there. So yeah, it's quite nice. You can also see his shirt with the buttons and also the what's it called? The Pride of Wales uh, waistcoat, which. That's only one thing I'll say about this. The Prayer Wheels waistcoat here is a bit too light. It should be... It, here it's a lot more yellow and it should be, a, you know, not that yellow. It should be a lot darker than it actually is. The patterning on it is pretty much uh, bang on. But the colours are a bit off on that. So that's basically the only thing I'll say about that. The actual coat itself, you can see here... You can see on the the lapels themselves, you can see the lapels around the top are being given, you know, a darker brown that uh, is the same as the trim and that round here, which continues all the way around. And the coat itself is, you know, a tang brown, which also kind of has, uh, when you feel it, it's almost got like a sandstone sort of texture to it. And that's, but uh, that continues all the way around and you can see the lining of the coat and even the two little buttons on here and uh, two of uh, the pockets. Now these are the top two pockets because uh, the actual coat has four pockets. These are the two uh, upper pockets and the two lower ones are the ones that have the brown trim round the end just like it does on the lapels but not the top two and there uh, is uh, the bottom ones that he uses to put his hat in which is why it's not in there now you can also see uh, the trousers here which yeah these look more like uh, the checkered trousers though they're a bit of a weird colour as well I'd say as well they're, they're more of um, a general grey than they are. It's really weird. It's kind of like more of the colouring of the earlier trousers, sort of, and you know the pattern of the later trousers. Is a bit weird, but uh, the belt buckle is pretty good, good with a circle and that on there. Now the scarf. The scarf is obviously uh, the main, you know, attraction, and it is, you know, part of the thing. It is attached, and no, it is not flexible at all. But you can see, you know. The pattern on it is pretty good, and you can also see that the went to the ear of uh, making it look like the individual uh, stitching, which is just you know a bunch of lines. It does look uh, the lines like do look a bit thicker than the actual scarf itself would have, but still not not bad at all. And I think it really does you know help set it off. He also comes with his sonic screwdriver, which is going to be 
uh, probably a pain in the ass to focus on. Oh, actually, no, not too badly. So you can see it is based on the later version. Well, I say later version. It's the same Sonic screwdriver since the Pertwee era, but this is how it appears towards the end of its run. So you can see here that this is essentially a clean version uh, of it, where you can see the little section here which is white which uh because basically the uh tape the silver tape that was wrapped that was taped around it had pretty much almost completely come off by this point though some of it was still poking on but you can see obviously it's still season 17 because of the black section here of the emitter now the way tom baker uses this screwdriver you know he uses it any which way around there. Uh, it's it's never Pacific, but uh, it is really nice and it is held there. And uh, you can remove it if you want to, but personally, um, I prefer to just leave it in because it's much nicer like that. It's also on a nice little uh, velvet base there, so it's a nice soft little base, so it won't scratch whatever you're sitting it on. And yeah, it is a really nice, you know, sort of dramatic pose, you know, the sort of classic Tom Baker pose whenever you think of, you know, Tom Baker, this is one of the poses and that, that you're going to think of. Taking, you know, a quick, a very quick look at the packaging, it's just the standard old um, affair for these. So if you've got any of the others, they essentially all have the same sort of packaging to the others. So yeah, it is a shame. Um... You know, I would, I would, you know, it kind of makes me regret not picking up more of these as they came out. But when this was originally released, I think he was fifty pounds, and actually that's how much he actually cost today for me to get. Actually, speaking of the pockets, you can actually see the other pockets. They've got them the wrong way round. I've just noticed something. You can see the upper pockets there on that side and there though I swear it's the other way around or am I getting this completely wrong but I swear that the lower ones are supposed to have the trim and the upper ones don't I swear it's the other way around I'll have to double, I'll have to double check that I could be completely talking bollocks but the other pockets they have actually put them in there I literally just noticed them this second but yeah um I do really love uh, this statue, but this is also one of the harder and more pricey ones to get. The most hardest one to get are the Daleks, either of them. Um, I think particularly the Genesis Dalek is the hardest one to get because they were released right at the end of the line. And they were also more expensive. I think they retailed for like £70 rather than 50 at most places that had them. And... Um, one went on eBay from the same seller who was selling this. However, that one went for two over just over two hundred pounds, which I was not willing to pay fifty. You know, for for something like this, if you see it on eBay for, I'd say you know, if you saw it for fifty to seventy pound, then you've got it for a decent price. If you see it for obviously anything less than that, then you're getting it for a bit of a bargain. Um, you know, because this is used, but since it's a statue, you know, as long as it comes in its box with uh, this styrofoam packaging, which is what this one came with, then, you know, you're pretty much good to go. There's, you know, as long as it's being looked after, there's nothing really wrong with it. 